sure. I'm sure there'll be some people coming in, but we'll we'll get started anyway. Uh, this is this is the player panel. Uh, we're going to take an in-depth look at uh, JW, Kaltura, and VideoJS. Um, this is sort of uh, the format is basically we'll give a 10-minute presentation of each of the talks and then or each of the players, and then we'll sort of open it up for questions uh, across the the various uh, projects. And so we'll we'll start with the um, Kaltura player. You can't hear me very well. Uh, there's no there's no microphone, but I'll speak up a little bit more. Basically, we'll we'll have uh, ten minutes of each project, and then the uh, uh, open that up for questions. And we'll start first with the Kaltura player. So, uh, so this is the Kaltura player. I'm Michael Dale. This is Itai. Um, we work with Kaltura. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, Kaltura player. Toolkit, we'll, we're going to give a quick overview of the architecture, talk about uh, cross-player uh, experiences, and then sort of the open source community and, and sort of uh, documentation of the project itself. Um, as, as we all know, you know, HTML5 won out against Flash a while back, and now we've sort of, you know, have new new set of problems and new uh, challenges, sort of, you know, targeting a lot of different devices. Uh, supporting this sort of fragmented mobile uh, ecosystem of devices. While, while desktop HTML5 has largely uh, replaced the uh, capabilities that were available in Flash, we still see a lot of gaps in the context of uh, mobile offerings. So here you see some of the um, limitations outlined uh, against mobile versus sort of a, a full-featured HTML5. This, this uh, best case HTML5 on the right-hand side maybe would be like a Chrome or uh, Firefox or you know, a latest HTML5 browser versus sort of what uh, you get on, by default on a, on a mobile Safari or a mobile Chrome, uh, depending on the Android version, of course. You can see it gets, it gets better over time for Android as, as new features uh, get introduced. Um, I won't go through the whole list, but you know things like um, autoplay is sort of a basic one. Uh, Chromecast, full screen controls, uh, you know, being able to control the player interface, uh, DRM, and, and basically the approach we've taken to uh, deliver the uh, experience across mobile is, of course, go into a native environment. Uh, you know, launch an app essentially. And uh, we try to have the same player framework work against both native applications as well as sort of uh, HTML5-based applications. And so the, the basic architecture is such that we can swap out uh, uh, a, native, a native player for a video tag uh, player. Or in the case of the browser, this would be your Flash or your, your uh, Silverlight plugins uh, in cases where you need to deliver a feature to older browsers that don't have all the HTML5 capabilities to uh, deliver a particular targeted feature. Um, and then you can see here it, it uh, broadens the amount of uh, features that you can support as, as you include these native packages that can sort of do native callouts to native plugins for whether it's DRM or you know adding a little Chromecast screen or a native share or whatever it may be. Um, yeah, we'll, I'll, you want to jump? We'll do that one. Yeah. Um, and then here's another basic. Uh, so going back to the player framework itself, it's all sort of JSON-driven, CSS, HTML templates, what you would sort of expect for a modern uh, web uh, HTML-driven player. It also has some extra features around sort of HLS normalization, which just means sort of a software HLS player uh, in the case of desktop Flash and uh, software uh, HLS player for Android as well. And then we'll, we'll go into a little bit of sort of how this uh, JSON structure looks, you know, just quickly because we only have 10 minutes or so, but, but just to give people an idea of um, how, that, how those uh, components come together within, a, within the player system. We'll this is pass it over to Ty. Hi, thank you, Michael. So uh, basically, uh, as Michael mentioned, we have uh, uh, we actually wrap each uh, uh, player as an AppTag layer, and on top of that, we build like uh, JavaScript plugins, uh, HTML template, 
and CSS to, in order to uh, configure how the UI will look like. We have a nice uh, uh, studio that you can uh, like uh, check uh, in and out the plugins and then you will see them on the screen. This is part of the, uh, uh, of the player package. It's all turned out into a, a JSON file that uh, actually tell us wi which part of the player, which part of the plugins we should uh, uh, turn on for this specific uh, player. Each uh, plugin also have its own uh, JavaScript for uh, the logic, uh, templates for HTML if it's a visible uh, a, a plugin, and the CSS of course for the uh, look and feel. Of course, our player needs to uh, handle multi-screen experience, so how do we tackle it? Uh, so first of all, the player must be responsive. It means every UI component have its own uh, uh, priority, if it's high, medium, or low, and uh, by that we uh, reduce uh, the number of uh, components for a smaller screen, and of course uh, put them all on a big one, like TV or uh, iPad versus iPhone. Um, one more uh, uh, feature that we have on the player is, of course, the related video. <coughs> it allows you to uh, 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 like uh, see the experience when you finish the video, uh, to go to the next one. And we have some nice APIs. You can do it from the uh, Kaltura platform or from your platform, you know, to add the uh, 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 your type of uh, uh, related video. Um, Adaptive streaming, so as Michael mentioned, we must support uh, uh, um, uh, adaptive streaming, HLS, of course, due to the iOS uh, compliance, so we took the HLS and developed it also for Flash and for uh, Android, that uh, we can uh, serve better all the devices and build some more features on top of the HLS, uh, for example, ad stitching. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, MPEG Dash, it's uh, now uh, go going to take a, a, a big part of our life, including the uh, DRM, uh, such as uh, Chrome lately uh, uh, disabled the uh, Silverlight, so you must do today DRM using uh, uh, the media extension, encrypted media extension. So this is also a field we are uh, 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 getting into. want to set up the demo real quick I'll explain it. Sure, so sure, sure. Okay, so now we're, what we're going to quickly show is the um, the player doing that native call out as as many people are probably familiar if you play a video from Safari on a iPhone, you often uh, you'll get the sort of Apple UI for the player. And what and what we'll quickly show here is uh, this is sort of a Safari, or sorry, that, that was the Safari browser, and now we jumped into the Kaltura player in a, in a native application. Uh, so, so you're able to get your own, your own custom controls. Notice this is not the uh, same controls that Apple provides, and notice you have sort of custom uh, image overlays. That's something that normally is, is not uh, doable in, in an iPhone environment, and this sort of enables you to sort of seamlessly call out and get all your customizations, all your business logic, all your player functionality in the in the native environment. And I think with that, we should uh, switch to the next. There's a lot more <laughs> slides, but we, I don't know if we got to all everything. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's all, yeah, open source community <laughs> that's important. We're at an open source conference. <laughs> uh, you know, check out the project on GitHub. Um, there's a lot more information there uh, about getting started with it and uh, fun stuff, all that fun stuff. Well, thank you. Thank Oops. you. Uh, okay, hi, my name is Steve Heffernan. I'm going to talk quickly about VideoJS. Um, <coughs> it's an open web player. It's uh, the one with the seagulls and the dolphins, and I swear we have the rights to use that video. <laughs> uh, major features are um, 
the HTML5 video tag everywhere. One of the original goals for the project was to make that tag possible in older browsers like IE6, IE7, and IE8, or uh, to use MP4s and Firefox. Less of an issue these days, but it was one of the original goals of the project. Uh, we provide a common JavaScript API between uh, HTML5, Flash, and other players like YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud. So uh, if you're looking to kind of uh, build on top of those players and you want a consistent API across those, uh, that's what we provide. And the uh, API looks very similar to the Video Element API. So if you're familiar with that API, you're familiar with the VideoJS API. Uh, you can style the player using CSS, uh, so if you change the background color of the progress bar um, in one place, it will work whether uh, HTML5 is being used or Flash or one of the other players. You style it once using a technology that you're used to, CSS, and it works everywhere. Uh, we have a, a pretty large community of developer plugins, so people building on top of the project. So we try to keep the core project very small. Uh, we don't add many more features than what uh, the video element supports itself, but then across all the different players. Um, and then all of the additional features that you might want to add in, you'll find in our uh, community of plugins. And then finally, uh, it's Apache 2 license, so uh, free to use in whatever use case you want. A uh, quick little history on the project. Uh, started building it back in 2010. I uh, was going through the, um, the Y Combinator Startup Accelerator program. If you've heard of that, it's, um, we were building a, uh, a startup called Zencoder, which is transcoding API. Um, and uh, during that, uh, we went out to Mountain View, California, and rented this house in the middle of the woods to just kind of hack away in. And we stayed there for four months, uh, miles away from anybody else. And on the weekends, my, uh, my co-founders would go home to their families, but I didn't have family, so I stayed in the house uh, <laughs> all by myself on the weekend. And uh, out of pure boredom, I started just building controls on top of the HTML5 video element. And so that's essentially how VideoJest was born. Uh, fast forward to uh, a couple years later, uh, a company called Brightcove. It's a larger online video platform that uh, powers a lot of the major video websites out there. Um, acquired Zencoder, our startup, and at the same time uh, put me full time on VideoJS and kind of became the primary corporate sponsor of the VideoJS project. So uh, I'm not working out full time and it's a, it's a great gig. Uh, and that brings us to today. This is the, the current website. Uh, so who is using VideoJS? So actually uh, Twitter, Dropbox, GitHub, Instagram, Tumblr, a lot of big uh, brands. A lot of this just in the last year. So it's been a very exciting year for the project. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been uh, really exciting to see these other groups come on and even start to contribute back to the project. A lot of times you have big companies like this just use it, um, but they're actually like helping out, contributing back. So that's great. Um, and then uh, because of the acquisition uh, that Brightcove acquired, the uh, Zencoder, they're actually now implementing VideoJS as their next generation player. So all of the websites that use Brightcove will also be using VideoJS in the near future. So uh, lots of progress in that area. Um, some stats here, uh, a couple billion views a month. That's not including the Twitters and Dropbox. They use their own downloaded version. Um, the most interesting one to me is the, uh, the core contributors. So we've had up to uh, over 100 core con contributors now, which is um, uh, really awesome. This last year, we put a ton of work into uh, our processes around pull requests and uh, issue management and all the stuff on GitHub that uh, can be really difficult to wield as you're trying to build the project and also manage the community. And we've been working on that really hard, and it's, uh, it's paid off. Some of the most recent versions were um, almost entirely brand new contributors, people who had never touched the project before. So um, pretty proud of the progress we've made in that area. Uh, this is what the community looks like. We've got a core team, about six guys from different roles. Um, and then, as I said, over 100 different uh, contributors from you know, small patches to larger contributions um, all along the range. Uh, and then finally, uh, version 5.0, we've um, got some major changes coming. Uh, no major API breaking changes if you're building plugins on top of it, but uh, we've got a new default skin that we're really excited about. It's, uh, we worked a lot on cleaning it up. Um, uh, extensibility, so making it easier to add buttons to the control bar, um, uh, and responsive design. So like people adding the player into responsive sites, that's been a big request. 
uh, adaptive streaming support, so both uh, Dash and HLS, and uh, we've been building this uh, in a way, well, we're still working on it, but we're attempting to build this in a way that we can share as much code as possible between uh, Dash and HLS, and including uh, across uh, media source extensions and Flash. So doing as much of the work as we can in JavaScript, and then just passing the bytes to where they need to go at the end. So uh, that's been a really fun project. Um, and if you're interested in that type of streaming technology and would be interested in getting involved, uh, please let me know. Uh, improved accessibility. There's been a lot of um, talk around accessibility in video players lately, uh, and we've uh, certainly heard that and uh, been stepping up our game in that area. For one, we've uh, integrated with uh, Mozilla's VTTJS project, which is a very awesome um, implementation of VTT, uh, VTT captions in the browser. It's the same uh, library that's used inside of Firefox to display the captions, and so we're using that in the player as well. Um, and then just a, a minor fix, we fixed the tab order. It used to be that you would tab through the, through the controls in VideoJS, and they would go in any random order, and we've fixed that. It's now cleaned up. Uh, and then finally, uh, easier extension. Last year, as I said, we were focused on kind of the core code base and like how you can contri contribute back to it. And this next year, we're really going to be focused on how you build on top of it with uh, things like a Yeoman uh, plugin generator and easier way to build uh, d design and share skins for the player. Um, so yeah, it's going to be our focus for the next year. Uh, and that's it. So uh, yeah, as I said. Um, uh, we are open to any new contributors. Uh, as you guys, if you're interested in helping out with the project, we'd love to hear from you. Just come and find me after this. Thank you very much. Come on in. <laughs> Leave some room over there in case some other stragglers come in. Last chance. All right. Good enough. All right. Okay, so uh, my name is Pablo Shklovsky. i um, here with JW Player uh, and uh, happy to be here. So let's get started. Um, oops, actually, just, uh, oh, did I lose a slide? I moved a slide. That's the slide I wanted to show. All right. So a little bit about JW Player. Uh, JW Player is one of the oldest uh, open source video players on the web. Uh, it was uh, written first in 2005. Uh, so basically predated uh, widespread uh, video adoption on the web. Uh, it was the first player that launched with uh, YouTube when they first launched up. So uh, right today, uh, as of last month, we've stream we streamed uh, 17 billion video streams uh, across uh, 1 billion unique viewers um, across 3 million websites. Uh, so really pretty broad scope. Um, so I'm going to talk today a little bit about uh, the internal architecture of the player, not so much the features, but sort of how it's constructed, uh, kind of at a high level. Um, happy to talk about it later if you want more detail. Um, so essentially the way it works is uh, when a user comes in, uh, a developer will configure a player using similar JSON to Kaltura's player uh, called jwplayer.setup. Uh, what the player will do is it'll determine the correct um, setup mode for, uh, for that user's content based on browser capabilities, based on the content. Uh, so it'll either set up in a Flash player or in an HTML5 player. HTML5 is, is the default. Um, and uh, at, at that point, uh, the uh, user will have access to a JavaScript API, which will then translate down into the lower level player. So there's one, uh, one API um, that the user will need to interact with. And from a developer's perspective, you don't have to actually care whether or not a user is viewing your, your content in Flash or in HTML5. Uh, it all behaves the same way from the API. Um, and uh, what happens is that uh, lower level events will bubble up from the media through the lower uh, middle tier API through to the public API. Um, we have a plugin structure, plugin plug architecture. Uh, actually, there are two different types of plugins for legacy reasons. We've got Flash plugins, which are loaded by the Flash component, and that allows users to put UI in Flash, uh, in, for example, in full screen mode, where HTML elements are no longer visible. Um, and uh, JavaScript plugin, uh, which sits on top of the standard plugin API. Um, so the only difference between doing a plugin API or doing a JavaScript API and writing JavaScript is that the API 
uh, is embedded in your code, and the plugins can be loaded off of the CDN uh, at, at, uh, com at runtime. Uh, so internally, uh, in both Flash and HTML5 modes, uh, what we have is a concept of a media provider. Uh, so instead of model view controller, the model is essentially controlled by uh, the media. So for example, in HTML5, the model is the video tag, and all events coming up from the video tag uh, drive the UI. Um, and uh, so in, 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 in Flash, you have multiple media provider types, uh, for example, progressive download versus RTMP versus YouTube. So um, it, it sort of standardizes uh, a, uh, a model for uh, for consuming media and displaying the events. And the, the, the provider API, or th the provider interface, rather, uh, is fairly simple. It's you know play, pause, seek, stop, load. Um, so essentially, everything that different, uh, all, all, all media requires those, those ba basic uh, tenants. So that's what the provider API exposes. Um, so some examples of media providers, RTMP, for those of you who are familiar with Flash video, um, it's a, sort of a legacy. Uh, legacy streaming format still fairly popular with the CDNs, uh, although we're seeing much less uh, much less adoption as users move into to HLS. Um, so we have an HLS implementation for adaptive streaming uh, in Flash. Loads uh, MPEG2 TS, does the transmuxing into FLV, and then pushes it uh, to the Flash renderer, uh, which works okay for now. And we actually see quite quite a number of uh, folks still on HLS, even as Dash is becoming more and more popular. Um, we got a little sneak peek here of. Uh, Dash JS running in JW Player uh, using the HTML5 provider model. Um, so we actually have wrapped Dash JS here into a very simple uh, media provider API, and that, that MPB is loading here. So um, the uh, the demo gods have smiled upon me. So I'm going to come back here for breaks. Um, <laughs> it's not going to break, right, Steve? <laughs> Steve's contributor to uh, to Dash, Dash JS, so we're actually wrapping his uh, his work. It's great. <laughs> um, so a little little bit of a sneak peek on our our next uh, iteration of our of our architecture. Um, so uh, Flash and HTML5 running side by side works great, but it's pretty clunky, and you have to implement features more than once, which as a developer you never like to see. Um, so we've made uh, some progress with the browsers. Uh, some of the blockers for um, migrating entirely to HTML5. Uh, for the for the dis the, the display, uh, such as full screen support uh, in in uh, native full screen brow uh, native browser full screen uh, plus MP4 delivery across uh, many more browsers, uh, Firefox included, um, that's really enabled us to uh, abandon the the flash rendering mode as a as a um, a full player experience, and we're able to just use the flash providers uh, as dumb me uh, Chromeless media playback components. Um, so we're essentially going to be reusing the HTML5 uh, provider model. We'll wrap it with a flash loader, which will load the media. Uh, only in that uh, uh, flash display, that'll swap out the video tag, and we'll render video that way. Um, and that allows us to write uh, application logic once in JavaScript, and uh, flash can hopefully die a slow and painful death, <laughs> and we can eliminate it from the player. Why slow? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Ads is the answer. <laughs> Um, so we have uh, some cool new features. This is the one feature demo that I'll show, uh, which is um, uh, Chromecast. So um, that's a, a cool, um, cool new device, uh, one that we have uh, really adopted quickly and, and uh, are, are thankful for Google for implementing it the way that they did, which is that they provide a browser, a, a full HTML5 browser experience uh, and a very lightweight uh, communication layer uh, between the two. So um, I'm going to show a little demo of how this works with the JW player. And it's not a live demo because Chromecast sucks on public networks. But what you're seeing here is on this computer over here, we've got a JW player. Uh, we start, we hit the cast icon, and uh, it starts a uh, Chromecast session on your TV. Uh, what's happening there is there's an HTML5 app that's a JW player in full screen mode with a little bit of custom skinning on top of it. Um, and there's a communication between uh, the, the sender app, which is the player. The player sort of becomes a, uh, a, a sender. Uh, and the receiver, which runs on the TV. And so basically what the, what's happening is that the Chromecast application is signaling to the desktop application the state of the player. Uh, the player just renders a UI. Uh, for example, here's an ad. The, uh, the player knows that an ad is playing, so I'll show the companion ad. Uh, the user can actually click on this, which advertisers love. Uh, and the, uh, the, the uh, Chromecast application renders all the video playback and essentially takes over the playback session. 
Um, so for example, in this advertising use case, all the, all the beaconing that's going on to the ad server is coming from the TV. So you can really just close out your, uh, your web browser and your video player will continue to play as, uh, as, as configured. So get out of there. Um, so JW Player has been an open source video player since, uh, since its inception, since back in 2005. Uh, we recently migrated from a uh, pretty, pretty uh, cobweb-infested uh, subversion repository over to a shiny new GitHub repository. Uh, we've seen uh, a, a significant uptake, uh, uptick in uh, open source uh, contributions, uh, probably just due to um, the ease uh, which Git allows you to um, submit pull requests and review them and have a conversation there. Uh, all in one place, so it's really, really, really nice. Um, in, uh, in addition to the player itself, uh, JW Player, the company, uh, which does much more than a, just a video player, uh, contributes to multiple open source projects. Um, we we uh, upstream when we can, and we've uh, written a few, uh, a few uh, projects of our own for our own internal purposes. Um, so uh, one of the nice things of, about our uh, sort of our approach is that um, uh, sort of since the beginning, we've had a very active. Uh, developer community and also an active uh, support community. So our, our forums are, are, are still very active. Uh, we recently implemented uh, a, a, a sort of a de democratic roadmap um, just to see what the community uh, wanted in terms of new, f new features and functionality. Dash was, was at the very top of the list, um, followed by CSS skinning and uh, DRM in HTML5, which essentially means Dash. So we know where we're going <laughs> for the next couple of months, um, but uh, can't wait to see uh, how that turns out. So uh, that's it. That's all I got. All right. So, so uh, right now, so, so we've got we've got about uh, 15 minutes left. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, do you want to? So we'll basically do uh, Q and A. Um, so you've seen the presentation. Any questions? Where's the benchmark? What's, what, 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 ben <laughs> what, 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 oh, the best one, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I get to say something about that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's actually kind of a difficult problem because of the, the way, I mean, there's so many different uh, use cases and features that you would uh, potentially test against, you know, and, and a lot of things come into play when actually measuring, you know, the first time the ad starts to display uh, or the player starts to display content, you know, because there's ad network fulfillment and, there's a lot of different factors that can come into sort of trying to make a objective, you know, attempting to make an objective analysis. But and also it, it's difficult for any given vendor to to conduct that objective analysis to begin with. So I think it'd be a good project for somebody to to take on if they were interested in doing that. Next question. What, what about user and developer concerns? Because I think it's funny when you have so many video web players, there's nobody who has So we, we actually, uh, so the, the, the question was, uh, how about end user conferences uh, for, for these, uh, these products? Um, so JW Player had our first conference last May. Uh, it's called JW Insights. We're going to do it again this year. So feel free to come in New York City in May. <laughs> we have uh, Cultural Connect that uh, <laughs> come in uh, uh, Cultural, Connect. Cultural Connect. Yeah, like uh, it's also uh, we, di we did Hackathon last, last Connect with a very cool uh, project. So you're welcome to follow and come to the next event. Uh, yeah, we haven't done one yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes? We don't. Uh, we, I, I'm, I'm sure this is something that, that all of us have, have struggled with. With Facebook, we've been in discussions with them. Um, they're very slow to move on uh, HTML5 players in the newsfeed. Um, so we actually, uh, for JW Player, we have a legacy uh, player that, that, that works in, in, uh, in Facebook, but it's not our core player. Yeah, also us use a Flash player on Facebook, but Twitter l lately opened the uh, HTML5, and it's working there great, so. But just use Twitter. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, same situation. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the bug tracker. Uh, well, so we currently no more bugs. <laughs> there's no more bugs, right? Uh, so we're using we're using Git, Git, GitHub for uh, the pull, pull requests, um, and uh, we have our, our forums, which are, are the traditional. Please uh, let, let's let's connect afterwards, and and we'll. Uh,
Uh, yes, so we support it in adaptive and uh, HLS. So mul we have multiple audio tracks and a, a, u a u user interface to select between the two of them. Yeah, we support it also on HLS, on uh, uh, smooth streaming, both on browser and uh, Android, a native application. Yeah, HLS. Uh, VideoJS doesn't have that yet. We're working on that in with the integration with Dash.js. We'll give you another lonely weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a topic of internal discussion for quite some time. We we may we may transition to a more um, a popular license over time. Uh, Uh, we've we've definitely heard that. Yeah. What's your licensing scheme at the moment? It's Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, share alike. Yeah. I think it's worthwhile. I, uh, I guess Kaltura has a AGPL license, which is also like less than say an Apache license um, in terms of the freedoms that it allows, but but you know uh, still allows uh, commercial distribution in that case. But. So the, the, the question was, uh, Dash, as it's sort of consolidating uh, in terms of the standards, uh, will we see native uh, implementations in browsers for Dash? Uh, my guess is absolutely not. Um, so this has been sort of a discussion with the browser vendors, um, whether they should implement uh, streaming standards such as HLS, such as Dash. Um, the media source extensions API is a reflection of their approach to streaming formats. They're sort of agnostic, I guess, uh, is the official approach. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, so I don't think so. Uh, fire, yeah, yeah. yeah um, there was actually, Microsoft announced recently that they are building Dash into the browser just so you can use the, the MPD URL, but the other browsers won't. So it won't be something we can just rely on. We'll still need a program like Dash.js, but um, Dash.js is something that we're all kind of collaborating on right now, so that's at least you know, a positive. You'll have, be able to turn to one library. worthwhile to emphasize the fact that we have one dash JS library uh, that, that everybody's sort of targeting against and that's going to help the, the standard effort a lot because if, if you have lots of different uh, implementations it's very difficult for you know a, a server software can say it's working with one uh, streaming library and then it won't work with another and especially across browsers is it, it's very it becomes very complicated to uh, support a standard as, as you've seen with HLS we sort of have uh, standard by uh, Apple definition, you know, like what if it works on the iPad, then it's legitimate HLS. If it doesn't, then it's something else, you know. <laughs> and and so uh, something like that for for Dash is really critical. In this case, it's you know if it works with Dash JS uh, on, you know, then it's Dash, you know, type thing. I mean, although not to say that I mean Dash is obviously has a very verbose uh, standard standification process, but and Dash JS doesn't include everything in that standard. Uh, so again, just uh, a reference implementation is really valuable in sort of uh, being able to actually deliver media to end users. Other questions? Mm -hmm. People in the dark? Okay. DRM, no questions about DRM. <laughs> 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 it's usually very popular. Why are you doing <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> Anything you guys want to add? Um, All right. Yeah. So check out the project. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Next up.